Today, I'm taking a look at the SDR Play RSP1 software defined radio. So, the radio itself I purchased from HRO, and you can see it comes in this plastic package. I also bought this SMA to SO239 adapter, uh, but I got this from Amazon. I didn't get this with the radio. The radio comes in this plastic packaging and is nothing more than this black box that has a USB connector on one side and an SMA connector on the other side. The front of the radio simply has the logo stamped on and the back of the radio has the four screws that hold the case together and a serial number and compliance label. Inside the box is just a cardboard quick start guide which more or less just directs the user to the SDR Play website. So here's the quick start guide. You can pause the video here and read through that if you want to. I've navigated to the SDR Play Start Here site as directed on the quick start guide. This site will step you through installing the software and the drivers needed to run the SDR Play. As noted here in red, it's important to install the driver and software before connecting the SDR Play to the computer. So I'm going to start going through the steps here and I'm going to choose my country which of course is United States and my purchase location which was HRO. And Then I'll click continue and on the next page I'm going to select my operating system. Now in this case I'm going to choose Windows XP I'm using this old Intel Celeron laptop which is uh, something I had laying around um, but if you're using one of these other operating systems you would choose one of those options. I believe the install process is more or less the same especially for all the flavors of Windows. Not sure about the Linux, Mac or any of the other options. So I'll choose Windows XP and select continue. So once again you're reminded to not connect the RSP unit to the computer and you're also warned about antivirus software which may interfere with the installation process. So now I'll just check this box to certify that I've read these things and now I will register my device. So in my case I've got the RSP1 I'll click on that button and I'm given some fields to enter here. I can enter my name my email address and the serial number of my RSP unit which is on the back of the unit here on this label. On the next page I can choose which software I want to install. For the purposes of this demonstration I'm going to select SDR Uno. This is the software that is owned by SDR Play. So I'll select that and continue. Once at this page we're ready to install and that's accomplished by clicking this link that's located here. A verification page is displayed where I just need to click in here in this CAPTCHA box to prove that I'm not a robot and now I have to pick the squares that include street signs so this one, this one, this one. I think that's right so we'll go ahead and continue and I've answered correctly so now I can start the download and you should be able to see the download in process at the bottom of the browser here once the download is completed I'm just gonna click on this to start the installation so now I'll choose run and I'm going to agree to the license agreement here and then choose next and once again I'm informed that I need to make sure the RSP is not connected to the computer before continuing. In my case it's not so I'm going to continue. And I'll just verify the installation folder and now I'll verify that I want a shortcut created on the start menu and I'll let it create a desktop shortcut as well. So now this is all verifying the installation information and now I can install. Now at this point, uh, Windows is prompting me that this software is not uh, recognized by Windows. That's okay. I'm going to continue anyway. 
And now at this point, it's instructing me to connect the RSP to the computer. So I'm going to do that by simply plugging this end of the USB cable, which is not supplied with the RSP, by the way. You have to provide your own USB cable. At this point, I'll connect this end of the USB cable, which is not supplied with the SDR play. So once that's connected, I'll set the radio aside for the moment and connect the other end to a free USB port on my computer. Now Windows will go through and try to install a driver for me. Now that I've gotten the found new hardware wizard, I'm going to go ahead and let Windows install the file, install the software automatically. I'll choose next and this may take a couple of So now I'm getting prompted again about the uh, Windows verification. I'm going to continue anyway. So now the hardware wizard has found the correct driver and installed it. So I'm just going to click finish. And now I should be able to click next here. here. And I will now click finish and leave launch SDR Uno up. And I'm not sure why it's asking me to install this again, but I'll go through it again. I'm not sure why I had to install the driver a second time. Before I start the software, I'm going to connect my antenna. So I'm just going to remove this rubber cover here. So now I'm going to attach my SMA adapter by simply screwing it on there. And then I'll just connect my coax here to the SO239. The antenna I'm using is a fan dipole with legs cut for 80 and 40 meters. Uh, and that's out in the side yard. So now I'll just set the radio aside and focus on the software here. So now I should be able to close the web page. We're not going to need that anymore. And now I'll just launch the SDR Uno from the start menu. And you'll see here I want to choose the SDR Uno by itself, not the other one. So the first panel that appears is the SDR Uno main panel. And this is the panel that controls all of the other sub-panels which control the radio. So to get started, I'm going to click on the SP1, the SP2, and the RX buttons. And those are going to launch the three main sub-panels that are used for tuning the radio and setting the modes. So here's SP1. And I'm going to resize that and kind of put it in the middle here. Here's SP2. I'm going to resize that, put it down here. And then I'll click on the RX button. So these are the four panels that control most of the radio's functions. There's a few other sub options and things, but for most listening, everything can be done with these panels displayed. As I said before, this is the main control panel. This is the RX control, or what you could think of as sort of the radio's front panel. This is the band scope or spectrum display on the top, and then there's a waterfall display down here. And this pane down here is also sort of a spectrum display, but it displays a zoomed in version of kind of what's coming through the passband and allows you to kind of change the filter width and things like that. So in order to get started, I'm going to simply push this play button and you should start to hear audio come out of the computer speakers. And I'm just going to mute this temporarily. So now that the radio is on, you can kind of see some things activated. Here's the spectrum scope and the waterfall display. Here's the bandpass display. And up here in the main control panel, you can kind of see here, this is sort of a um, CPU fuel gauge. This tells me uh, how hard the CPU is working. And in the case of this laptop, it's working pretty hard to kind of run this software and deal with. Uh, this is an older laptop, not really well suited for this, but it was something I had laying around and I wanted to kind of put it to use, so I thought that this may be something I could use it with. So as you can hear there's definitely audio coming out of the speakers. 
So as you heard, the audio was skipping quite a bit, and that's because this laptop just isn't quite powerful enough to keep up with this software. This is an old laptop. It's only a Celeron processor in this thing. I'm not sure how much memory is in it. It's something that I had spare and was laying around and wanted to try and see if I could get it to work with the SDR Play. Now what I found is that with the default setting, I get that skipping audio. But what I can do is I can change or reduce the amount of bandwidth that the radio is receiving at any given time to kind of help the processor deal with uh, the amount of data that it has to process. And that's achieved by these two buttons here. The first button is the sort of the spectrum width that the radio is currently set to. Or actually, they call it the sample rate. So you can see here it can choose from 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on up to 10 megahertz, meaning that the smallest scale is 2 megahertz from end to end and the largest is 10 megahertz. So I'm currently set at 2 and then over here this button is actually a divider of this number. So right now it's set to 1, 2 divided by 1 is 2 meaning that the full spectrum is displayed. If I change this to 4, I narrow up the spectrum width to 500 kilohertz or 2 divided by 4 and that allows the, rate, the computer to process less of the spectrum at any given time and allows it to be able to keep up with what it needs to do and you can kind of see that here the CPU usage has gone down into a more acceptable range. So in order to run the radio at the higher bandwidths, I'll simply just need to use this on a better computer. For casual listening, this ought to work just fine and it puts this computer to use and frees up um, my other computer for other things. Now that I have the bandwidth set so this computer can manage uh, handling all of the incoming signals, I can start tuning around the band and seeing what I can hear. On the right side of the RX window, or the main tuning window, you can see that there are a number of presets, and these correlate to the ham bands. So clicking on this button, for instance, would bring me up to the 2 meter ham band. But I'm going to go back to the 80 meter ham band, because I know that there will be some activity there this time of the evening. One of the ways of tuning the frequency on this radio is to hover the mouse over one of the frequency registers in the display here and then simply use the scroll wheel to tune up and down. Now you may be able to see in the camera that above the register that's active a little yellow bar will appear indicating that that is the register that's active. I'm going to try and dial in a particular frequency that I know should have activity on it this time of evening. So I've simply hovered over this register and I've tuned up to the 8 and then I'm going to move this one up to 7 and this one up to 2. Once I get to the particular frequency that I want then I'm going to select the mode and you can see that there are several modes to choose from. There's AM, there's synchronous AM, FM, CW, double sideband, lower sideband, upper sideband, and digital. So in this particular case the stations that usually transmit on this frequency do so in AM. So I'm going to leave that setting on the AM mode. Down here in this row I'm going to leave these VFO settings alone for now. And I'm also going to leave alone the FM settings because I'm not in FM. Same thing with the CW settings. I'm going to leave those alone and I'm going to go over to the filter settings. These are presets for the passband filter. There's 6,000, 8,000, 11,000, and 20,000. I'm going to leave this on 20,000 for now because I know the stations that transmit here are usually fairly wide. And then over here there are a couple of noise blanker settings. I'm going to leave that off for now. And there are several notch filters to choose from and I'm going to leave those all off as well. Over here is the AGC. I'm going to leave that on slow for now. Down here is a squelch setting. I'm going to leave that at its default. And this here is the volume control. I'm going to slide that up by clicking and dragging it. And then I'll unmute.
switch back to the, uh, the other mic, because, uh, you sound better with the D-104. I think you ought to fix Next up, I'm going to try and tune in a sideband station. So what I'm going to do is set the mode to lower sideband, which is the sideband mode that's generally used on this particular handband. And instead of dialing in a specific frequency, this time I'm going to look at the spectrum scope and I'm going to try and find an active frequency to uh, listen to. And I'm going to move my cursor over the center part of this where this red bar is and I should be able to click and drag. Now before I do that you can kind of see that there's a dark line in the middle here. And What that dark line represents is the passband or the filter width of uh, what's currently being received. You can see up here also when I change to lower sideband my preset filter width changed. So I've got 2800 3,000, 2,200, and 1,800. I'm going to open that up to 3,000. And you may have seen this widen out a tiny bit when I did that. And now I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to put my cursor here, and I'm going to click and slide, click and drag, over to one of these spikes. And I should be able to hear something there. So as you can tell, I'm not quite on frequency, so I'm going to dial it in up here by scrolling up. Okay, so that sounded pretty good for sideband. Down here in this particular window, this shows the passband, or sort of a zoomed in version of what we're seeing up here. These two red lines show the filter edges. Anything out here in the lighter color is being rejected by the filter and anything in the middle is being passed. I'm going to unmute this and I'm going to show that I can click and drag either one of these filter edges if I wanted to make the passband wider or if I wanted to slide it around and maybe filter out some noise that might be present on this particular signal. So next I think what I'll do is tune down to the AM broadcast band and uh, just see what it's like to receive a broadcast signal. So in order to get there, I'm going to click my 160 meter because that'll get me kind of closest to the broadcast band and then I'll just tune down to a station that I know should be coming in fairly strong this time of day. And I'm going to set my mode over to AM up here. I'm going to leave my filter over here at 20K and I'll unmute it and we'll see what it sounds like. Now that I'm on the broadcast band, I'm going to tune around. Okay, that station is further away, but it's coming in better. There isn't quite as much noise on it.
Well, I'll just try one more here while I'm at it. It was supposed to go up to 7.5. And remember, the RBI cut its key rate to 6.25% from 6.5 October 4th. It was a surprising move to most people when uh, Governor Patel was just taking over at the RBI. There's a, a separate measure, uh, the GBA, uh, used in India, and it fell to 7.1, and it was supposed to be 7.5. So now, just to see what FM sounds like, I'm going to go up to the VHF band, and I'm actually going to go up to one of the NOAA weather stations and see if I can tune that in. It may not come in real strong on the antenna that I have here, but um, we should be able to get something. And it looks like we've got a signal there. So I've got it kind of close. I'm going to click on this just to get it where I think we should be. So that's the 475 frequency. And I'm going to switch my mode over to FM. And you should be able to see in the camera here that I've got most of the signal in the passband here in the darker area. So that should be good. But if I wanted to widen this out, I can click over here under the FM mode. I could click that to wide FM. And you can see that opens up the receive spectrum quite a bit. But I'm going to leave that on narrow. And we'll miles an it. hour with gusts up to 30 miles an hour. Saturday night, mostly clear until midnight, then becoming partly cloudy. Lows 50. So there's what that station sounds like. That's the, the uh, local weather station, of course. Oh, that's another station. West winds 5 to 10 miles an Not hour. sure where that one's out of. Up to 20 miles an hour in the afternoon. Chance of snow 30 and just like the other bands, I can narrow this up using these presets if I want. Or I can grab down here and narrow or widen that up. And just one thing to note down here in AM or FM mode, clicking or dragging either side of the filter will make it, uh, will make both sides kind of move. You can't drag one side or the other like you can in sideband mode. I think what I'll do now, just for the heck of it, is try and tune down to the FM broadcast band see what things sound like down there. So I'm going to tune to what should be the strongest station at this location, which is 91.7 WHUS broadcasting from the University of Connecticut. So now you can see on the band scope, I'm still in the narrow FM mode right now, but you can see that the signal is quite wide. And uh, I, I'm presuming that when I go over to the wide FM mode, the computer's going to struggle with that again. And I'll unmute it. Yeah, and I'm still not even as wide as I could be. You can see up here the filter presets. I'm going to want to go up to 192K. So the computer is really struggling with that, and you kind of see it's pegged out over here. Hi, I'm Mitski from Brooklyn, New York. You're listening to WHUS 91.7 Stores. Inhale. Exhale. You are smart and strong. You are compassionate and genuine and powerful. I know you have stress to deal with. Too much homework and work and friends to see and errands to run and dishes to wash and laundry to do. And there's an exam coming up and an interview and you are okay. You are breathing. You are alive. And you are capable of achieving great things. Difficult roads often lead to beautiful destinations. All you have to do, all you can do, is take it one step at a time. You've got people in your corner, and we're cheering you on as you tackle life, when you succeed and when you fail, because that happens sometimes. It's not fun now, and it probably won't ever be fun, but I know, we all know, that you can get back up. So embrace life. Okay, I think that's enough for the inspirational college message there, but anyway, you can kind of see what's going on with the broadcast FM. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with the SDR play. It seems to be working pretty well. As I've said before, this computer just isn't quite up to the task of really serious listening with the SDR play. It's just not quite powerful enough, especially as you can see for 
Broadcast FM. For casual sideband listening, things like that, CW, this will be fine. You know, for more serious DXing and, and things like that, I can always throw this on my other computer, which handles it perfectly. I think I'm going to wrap up the video of the SDR play here. I'll probably make some more videos in the future, maybe going into a little more in-depth usage or maybe doing some DXing or band scanning or something with this thing. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. Thanks for watching.